Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we begin here at 5 with some developing weather concerns. Yep, Kim Adams has her eye on some storms just to the south of us. Still trying to figure out whether they're going to impact us here in Metro Detroit, Kim. Well, I'll tell you what, the Tigers made the right call. Getting in that game was pretty much a miracle as it is pouring down rain in parts of Wayne County right now, including parts of Detroit. But it's what's going on to our south that we're watching very, very closely. At 4 o'clock, there was a tornado warning issued for Ottawa County. That's just south of the border. Right around Woodville, there was a potential for a tornado with some rotation on the radar, but nothing was sighted. Then you go back out to the west in Indiana, and there is a confirmed tornado in Noble, Indiana. So it's still, again, to the south of us. And then a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of uh, Putnam, Ohio, just outside of Bowling Green. But back at home, we just have some rain through parts of Metro Detroit, including Hamtramck and Melvindale. But you go down to Monroe and over to Ann Arbor in a line. If you draw a line from Ann Arbor down through south of Detroit, that's where there could be some severe weather up until about 9, 10 o'clock tonight. A low threat of, of tornadoes, but we can't rule it out, especially now that I've seen that development to our south means that the atmosphere is conducive and that we could see some of those stronger thunderstorms. Anything that develops tonight, though, will be long gone for the day tomorrow. But we'll talk about more about those storms tonight and what you can expect for the next several hours if you have outdoor plans coming up. OK, Kim, we appreciate it. All right, folks, we got one down. The Red Hot Tigers <laughs> move a step closer to locking up that wild card spot. And their ace makes a big statement on the mound today at Comerica Park. The weather, as Kim mentioned, forced the Tigers to move their game earlier, then move it a bit later. Didn't matter. Tarek <laughs> Skubal had his stuff going again. Hobie Artigue here with highlights of this game one of a six-game homestand. Well, all I know is that there's a storm brewing at Comerica Park right now because this team is looking really good late in the season. Well, the Tigers have been dominant, but this season is still far from done. They need to take care of business over the next few days in order to get to a place they have not been in a decade. Second to last series of the year starting today against the Rays. A game where offense was hard to come by. Scoreless in the fifth. Two outs for Winsel Perez, but he brings home two runs on a ground rule double for the lead. And that was plenty for Tarek Skubal. A perfect example of his special season today. Seven strikeouts in seven innings as the Tigers win two to one and increase their odds of making the postseason. We know how exciting this is. The dugout uh, vibe is incredible. The energy from the beginning of the day. We wait out a short rain delay. Um, you know, the, the, the work, the, the talk, the, the energy. I mean, everything matters and everything matters multiplied when you get to this point of the year. And this right here, that's you can't read it. It no. says five, trust yes. me. Uh, that is the magic, magic number, number for the Tigers right now. If you're sitting at home, you don't know what that means. It means it's a combination of Tigers wins and losses by the Twins and Royals. If that mm -hmm. adds up to five, the Tigers will be in the postseason. Twins and Royals both going tonight. They both tonight. play tonight. tonight. So, yep. so still the Tigers have a half game yep. lead right now for the number two spot, but still a lot of baseball yep. to be played. There is. One yep. game at a time. Okay, yeah. Obi, thank you. Well, Detroit baseball fans have even more reason to believe their team is playoff bound. <laughs> Victor Williams is live with the post game excitement. Victor, nobody's taking this for granted, are they? <laughs> <laughs> Kimberly, no, they're not taking anything for granted. They're really just taking it all in. We have seen nothing but proud fans coming out of Comerica Park celebrating this win that the Tigers were able to get over the Rays. And just think about it, months ago, no one had the Tigers on their radar, so of course this is a big deal. Now they have a winning chance of going to the playoffs and beyond. The energy coming from the fans has pretty much been nothing short of electrifying, and oh, what a time it is to be a fan right here in the Motor City. It's exciting to come down here, especially because we live very far away. So yeah. it's exciting to come down here and see that they're playing well and they're doing well. Yeah. And I will say, even though it's raining today, the fans actually are really excited. So that's yeah. really exciting. It's really cool to be in Detroit right now. Obviously, the Lions are doing super well. I'm really excited to see where the Tigers go. And the fact that we can just walk over here in the middle of a Tuesday afternoon and come to a game is awesome. Big expectations going into the season. And, you know, they're finally living up to them. So it's, it's nice. And you're going to see a lot of fans who are just proud, ecstatic all over the place. 
a lot of those folks heading to the bars around here so you know that the businesses are also happy that they're doing well but there are just five games left in the regular season victor williams local four we will be watching them closely okay victor we appreciate it so much in more news tonight, just how old is DTE's infrastructure and equipment? Well, for the first time ever, we're getting a glimpse of the power company. Recently, the Michigan Public Service Commission released an audit looking at two of the state's largest electric utilities. Local 4's Shante Passmore is live in Corktown with some of the findings. Shante? Kim, you know, power outages, long restoration times. We've heard of those stories. And from time to time, we hear from DTE on how it needs to improve its infrastructure. Tonight, we're learning part of the reason why. It's an audit being called the first of its kind in Michigan, examining the equipment and operations of the state's two largest electric providers, Consumers Energy and DTE. Tonight, local for reviewing some of the findings for DTE. A third party auditor found roughly 88% of all DTE electric customer outages are caused by distribution circuits. So this happened around last winter. The power was out and it took them like three days to restore. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Three days. The problem, some of the equipment dates back before the Great Depression. Nearly 40% of DTE substation transformers were installed between 1924 and 1960. Some transformers date back to the 1960s, older than comparable utilities transformers. Though the auditors reveal, transformers should be replaced because of their condition, not age. They should improve their infrastructure, and I think the corporate, the corporate executives, I think they should incur that cost, whatever it is. I think the customers should not incur that cost. Aging infrastructure aside, the report launched following the commission's concerns over frequency of outages, the length of those outages, and restoration time. The audit shows DTE is in the bottom 25 percentile in the U.S. when it comes to average time required to restoring service. DTE responded in a statement reading apart. We remain laser focused on delivering on our commitment to our customers, reducing power outages by 30% and cutting outage time in half by 2029. All right, so in so many ways, what was this audit all about? Well, taking a closer look at the power grid and then going, how do you make it more reliable? And we listen to some of the dates I rattled off in my piece. You may be wondering, why did this report come out now in 2024? Coming up at 6, we're hearing directly from one of the commissioners. Live from Corktown tonight, Shante Passmore, yeah. Local 4. Okay, Shante, thank you. Things are back to normal at the Mire on 8 Mile near the border of Detroit and Ferndale. Earlier today, you might have noticed the store entrance taped off. A large police presence was there around noon. Well, we now know that's because a man was shot in the parking lot. Apparently began as an argument. Things got escalated. The gunman is in police custody, and we're told the injured man is expected to make a full recovery. A local doctor's office was the site of a raid this morning, and it all had to do with a doctor believed to be prescribing pain pills illegally. Sean Lay reports from Taylor. Major bust here in Taylor. I'm on Telegraph right at Eureka. Follow me this way. Taylor police cars. So many of them in front of this place. It's a neurology clinic. We can't show you the whole sign. The doctor who's just been arrested here, his name is on that sign. I'm going to cover up his name here until he is charged, but this place is shut down for good. It is completely shut down. Police are telling us this was a pill mill operating for a very long time, pushing narcotics out on the street. So popular with patients who wanted those narcotics. This place was filled every day. It was filled this morning and people coming up from Ohio as well. Taylor police say this doctor allegedly was the number two pill mill doctor illegal. They say in the state of Michigan, number two, a very big fish here. He was taken out in cuffs here uh, as the raid was going down. I asked him, what about the impact he allegedly was having on this community? He had nothing to say, but he did say he was shocked by today's raid. Charges not yet. We will identify him once he goes to court. But again, police are saying this is a major impact. This will have a major impact on people, on overdoses here, on health and wellness here, uh, limiting, uh, ending pills coming out of this place for good. In Taylor, Sean Lay, Local 4. All right, Sean, thank you. And Sean's been speaking with the Taylor police chief about this raid ahead at 6 o'clock. The red flags, why the chief says investigators knew this doctor was going far beyond simply prescribing pain pills to people who legitimately needed them.
The last time President Biden will address the United Nations General Assembly as commander in chief of the U.S. As Alice Barr explains, this comes amid erupting tensions in the Middle East and an entrenched war in Ukraine. Alice. Good evening. President Biden has prided himself on strengthening alliances throughout his time in office, but the world leaders watching on today are already looking ahead to which American president will deliver next year's address. In his fourth and final address to the United Nations General Assembly, President Biden framing global challenges against those allies have overcome together throughout his long political career. Our test is to make sure that the forces holding us together are stronger than those are pulling us apart. No bigger test today than the wars in Ukraine and the Middle East, where Israel's escalating conflict with Iranian-backed Hezbollah militants in Lebanon risks tipping from a relatively contained offshoot of the fighting against Hamas in Gaza to a regional war. A diplomatic solution is still possible. The president pressing to revive deadlocked Gaza ceasefire talks, while three defense officials tell NBC News the U.S. is preparing to send troops to evacuate Americans from Lebanon if needed. Thousands of Lebanese are fleeing Israeli airstrikes in the south. As the U.S. seeks clarity on Israel's next moves, exposing struggles to contain the violence, President Biden pointing to allies' success in helping Ukraine hold off Russia, though that that war drags on. We cannot grow weary. We cannot look away. He notably referenced so Vice much. President Harris standing with him to back Ukraine as world leaders weigh the potential return of former President Trump and his America First policies. President Biden addressed his choice to leave the presidential race and he says put his country first. My fellow leaders, let us never forget. Some things are more important than staying in power. The president vowed to keep working for change on issues like the climate crisis and artificial intelligence as he looks ahead to his legacy on the world stage. Part of that legacy will be the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. President Biden today defended his decision to leave while saying he thinks every day of the 13 American service members killed during the withdrawal. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4.